Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that helps you get more out of movies, and today I'm going to tell you about some of the best, lesser known movies currently included with HBO Max. So this is my fourth HBO Max video. The older ones, I'll put links in the top comment below along with the full list of all the movies I talk about in this video as usual. All the movies on those older videos are not necessarily still on HBO, but all the ones in this one are at the time of me posting it. So be sure to click that subscribe button if it's still red and a little bell notification so you get to watch these while they're still current. But let's go ahead and start this video all the way at the back with my number 10 pick. Easily the least known movie on this list. It's called Tejano. Now this was filmed for practically no money, yet it doesn't show. Now you will notice budget limitations, particularly as you get to the climax. You can kind of tell they weren't quite able to do everything they wanted to do. However, the bulk of this movie looks like it was filmed for way more money than it cost. I actually had a chance to talk with the director back when this came out, and this was literally done with less money than most people watching this made in a year. I know that sounds like a lot, but for a movie to put everything on screen that you see, pay for actors, everything, it's not a lot of money. And when you take all that into consideration, Tejano punches way above its weight. This is a good, low-level crime movie about a guy who gets trapped on the south side of the border and has to figure out how to get back. Now, if you don't typically watch smaller movies like that, it may take a little getting used to, but if you do, Tejano is a gem that you should not miss. One of the all-time best sellers from the Walmart $5 bin is actually a pretty good movie. It makes my number nine pick. It's called Suicide Kings. Now, years back, again, when the $5 bin at Walmart was the thing, plenty of people knew about this movie, but today, especially younger viewers, probably missed it. In this movie, there's a group of guys which include a bunch of faces you're gonna recognize, but they kidnap Christopher Walken, who is the head of a crime family, and it's good stuff. This plays out a little more like a stage play, mainly because they're mostly in one location for the entirety of the movie, but Christopher Walken is great. The turmoil between the other guys is fantastic. A good story, or maybe I should say backstory, starts to develop as they engage with Christopher Walken's character. If you're a fan of his in any kind of way, Suicide Kings is not to be missed. Far and away the strangest movie on this list, although I don't know that Strange quite captures it, is The Skin I Live In. This is about 10 years old and stars Antonio Banderas as a surgeon who exacts revenge on a guy by turning him into a woman. It's as twisted as it sounds, it's got a very unique style to it, almost kind of a Stanley Kubrick type thing at times. Interesting music, again, a great look to it, and an incredibly dark delivery for that concept. If you thought it sounded a little silly, I can promise you, the delivery is not silly at all. This is a dark, twisted movie. It's one of the darkest, most twisted things I've ever seen Antonio Banderas do, but it is really well done. It's an intense sort of white knuckle nail biter that's got these really artistic flares all throughout it. If you like weird, interesting art film type stuff, this is going to be a great pick for you. If you don't, <laughs> do not watch this one. If the thought of Antonio Banderas turning a man into a woman against his will sounds too much for you, I can promise you this movie's gonna be too much. That said, if it sounds like you, this is a cool flick. Now the second weirdest movie on this list is also one of the newest releases. This came out during the pandemic and it got a lot of praise, but again, this is for the art film crowd. Not all of the ones on this list are, but Kajillionaire, is. This is about a family of grifters who are just living off the take. They're coming up with one scam after the other, and that part of the movie is interesting. You got some great performances and just some weird quirky stuff like this wall that keeps seeping soap. Just interesting stuff. But in addition to that, you get this really layered story about this young woman who's sort of trying to find her own way. And I'm telling you, as dry as that sounds, 
It works in Kajillionaire, but again, this is for the art film crowd. If that sounds like you, odds are you're gonna love this movie. But if that does not sound like you, you might like my next pick. The Hughes brothers went on to direct great movies like Dead Presidents and The Book of Eli, but their first feature film still holds up as one of the greatest hood flicks of all time, up there with movies like Boys in the Hood, and that is Menace to Society. This came out just a few years after my favorite movie of all time, Goodfellas, and the Hughes brothers are very open about the fact that they wanted this to be a black Goodfellas and they succeeded. Now the only real reason I don't put this movie completely up there with movies like Boys in the Hood is there is some mismatched acting skills going on. You've got some people who really don't do a good job at all that did not go on to have good film careers alongside some other people who went on to have fantastic careers. So to me the movie is miscast a bit which is unfortunate because the Hughes brothers did an expert job directing this thing and it is very much like Goodfellas in the sense that there's no real direct plot this is more of a picture of the lifestyle of these kids on the streets there are some intense scenes though however I still consider this movie to be incredibly underrated yes it does have a following but time has kind of forgotten it whereas it has remembered movies like Boys in the Hood now on this channel, I typically try to recommend movies that you haven't seen. I just love the idea of recommending things to people that they end up loving that they otherwise wouldn't have watched. And I can say the same thing about today's sponsor, Universal Yums. This is an incredibly fun snack service that I have been enjoying for well over a year now. I get a new box in the mail every month and it's always an event in this house. Just go to the link in the description below. You can sign up for one of three different boxes at three different price points and it will come to your house every single month packed with snacks from a different surprise country each month. And I'm talking chips, cookies, crackers, cakes, candy, always delicious stuff in the box and sometimes really weird interesting stuff that I've never tasted before which is what makes it so fun. The box also comes with little facts and games that you can play along with the snacks in the box which makes it an event. For me, I like to see what country it's from, go pick out a movie from that country or at least it takes place in it and make a whole event out of it. It ends up being sort of a fun date night at home that costs way less than a night out. So again, go to the link in the description, sign up for yours, cancel it anytime. It's a ton of fun, but let's go ahead and move on with the rest of this list. Sir, <laughs> please wait your turn. I, I know, I know, but th this is an emergency. Hey buddy, ever heard of a line? Hey, have you ever been dragged to the sidewalk and being till you pissed blood? <laughs> One of Nicolas Cage's most underrated movies also stars one of my favorite actors of all time, Sam Rockwell, in Matchstick Men. Now this is actually directed by Ridley Scott and it is one of his better just flat out dramas. I dare to even maybe call it a crime drama because Nicolas Cage and Sam Rockwell play con men, professional con men. That's all they do is con people out of money. And then Nicolas Cage ends up taking a young woman under his wing and teaches her some grifts. So again, you've got sort of the grifter thing similar to Kajillionaire. In fact, these two movies would make a fantastic double feature. With Matchstick Men definitely being the more accessible one. And it's just beautifully shot. And on top of that, Nicolas Cage actually gives a really fantastic performance. He has OCD in this movie. And he does get a little zany at times. But he's also reserved at other times. It's not over the top Nicolas Cage all the time in this movie. And Sam Rockwell too. He's fairly subdued compared to what he normally does. All great stuff. But ultimately just a good, really well-rounded movie. This is one on this list that I could recommend to almost anybody watching. It's gonna appeal to the biggest, broadest audience because there are some stranger things on this list, let's be honest. Now, Michael Mann is one of my favorite directors. He directed the legendary Heat, one of the best crime movies ever made, but Thief is actually his first feature film. In this movie, James Caan plays a professional safe cracker, and this one is a fairly low-key crime movie. There's not a ton of dialogue, and when there is, it's fairly subtle, but I love that. It's got an amazing soundtrack by Tangerine Dream, and having come out in 1981, the very beginning of the 80s, this entire movie just oozes sort of this 80s synthwave feel, even just 
the start of it. Looks amazing. Again, for a movie made in 1981, if you're a fan of Michael Mann's work and you never saw this movie, it is a must watch. You can see the beginnings of where he would ultimately go with movies like Heat. I love it for that. But also, it's just a great James Caan crime movie. It's really fantastic, even if it is a little slow paced, but if you find that you like my recommendations generally and you like good crime movies, Thief is top notch. So Ridley Scott actually makes this list again with another crime movie that would make a fantastic double feature with Thief. It's called Black Rain. Now this one came out in 89, and while it still oozes this 80s sensibility, you can kind of see the transition into some 90s style and stuff, but in this one, Michael Douglas plays a New York cop who has to go to Japan to try to bring someone to justice. You get a little bit of fish out of water stuff, but you also see little glimmers of things like Blade Runner, which Ridley Scott had done years prior. The style of Blade Runner sort of comes through in this crime drama, which is fantastic, and it's also just a really good, epic crime story. Andy Garcia has a great role here, and it's still somewhat of a lesser known movie, even though it's absolutely fantastic. If you like this genre at all, Black Rain is one of those just lesser known movies that when you see it, you're gonna love it. My number two pick is another weird one, but it's also the darkest movie on this list. In fact, I consider it to be one of the darkest movies ever made. Not necessarily the most disturbing, but darkest. And that is Jacob's Ladder. In this, Tim Robbins stars as a man who is starting to have, we could maybe call him visions, but he's starting to see things that are really wicked visions and things, and he's not sure what's real, what's not. He wonders if he's losing touch with reality, and this movie is a bit of a magic trick because it's gonna play the same tricks on you. You're gonna be wondering, are we losing grip with reality? Are we in a fantasy world? What is going on? It's got incredibly dark visuals, especially for a movie that's done only with practical effects, yet they managed to squeeze in some terrifying imagery. I'm talking nightmare-inducing stuff, so <laughs> trust me, watch this one with caution. It's grim stuff, but just, expertly executed in terms of this weird sort of dreamlike genre, I guess I'm gonna say, tiptoeing around it, it's one of the best ever made. And then my number one pick is also incredibly dark, but it's much more accessible than Jacob's Ladder. It's called The City of Lost Children. This is a sci-fi fantasy movie from the directors of Delicatessen and Amelie, so it's got incredible visuals. In fact, I would compare the visuals here to be a little bit like 12 Monkeys, only better. And again, this is from a time where there's nothing digital. There's a few animations that pop up, but for the most part, what you're seeing on screen is in camera. Yes, some of it's miniatures, but it all comes across as real, tactical stuff in the real world, yet nothing looks like anything you've ever seen in the real world. It's stunningly beautiful and dark at the same time. If that sentence there captures your imagination, watch this movie. It is French language, you are gonna have to read subtitles, but it is an incredible movie that's unlike anything that's done in the English language, so I highly recommend it, especially if you've liked any of their other movies that I already mentioned. So if you've never seen it and you generally like my recommendations, even if you're not in the art house crowd, this is a cool flick that I think most people can get into, as long as you're not allergic to reading the subtitles. But that is the list. Let me know in the comments below what you look forward to watching the most. Also, help me thank the Patreon supporters. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, there's a link in the description below. There's also a link where you can become a channel member and get access to exclusive videos right here on YouTube so that you never run out of good movies and shows to watch. But I will keep making videos like this one as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for watching this HBO episode, and you will see me on the next one. <laughs>